Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Anime Watch Club, a bi-weekly group discussion and review where the hosts of the What You See Anime podcast nominate and vote on shows that we haven't seen or shows that hopefully lead to a great discussion. On today's episode, the Wolf Pack of the What You See Anime podcast will be reviewing the 1997 Ghibli movie Princess Mononoke. Let's meet today's abandoned children. First up, similar to San, he was also raised by animals, thus creating his name Cat. We got Cat. How's it going? I'm doing great, man. These cats loved loved me when I was younger, and they threw me out as soon as I turned 18. <laughs> <laughs> you belong to the streets uh, with the other cats. I walked the streets for years until I found my wife, and now she owns everything, even me. I'm doing great tonight. Awesome. Also, shout out to Burley, our first moderator of the night. When choosing between the environment or capitalism, he almost always chooses the sides of whoever has the most cash. We got Miles. Miles, how's it going? <laughs> You know me, just completely motivated by the money. Big Pharma um, Miles. Yeah, it's time to immediately dissuade everyone from that notion, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be defending your case in today's episode. This is actually just a court case. We're not actually doing Princess Spotted, okay. Uh, and uh, Pat. Ow! Wolfpack, baby. Yeah, that's our, our local AHL team, our NA, uh, affiliate of what NHL team? The Whalers. They don't exist anymore and haven't for 26 years. Uh, the Damn, that sounds like a problem. Carolina Hurricanes. It is. Close, not quite. Same division. Come on, uh, anybody. Boston Bruins. Um, no. Almost. Montreal Canadiens. The mean, Islanders. Not the Islanders. They have the Bridgeport Sound the Tigers. Devils? Nope, not the Devils. Okay, You're missing the big one. The Rangers? You guys are missing. Thank you. Yes, we are the New York Rangers affiliate. Bonus points for Pete getting it Woo! on the sixth guess out of the uh, the teams, but that's okay. There we go. We got So for there. the Wolf Pack that actually matters, there's, you know, the Wolf Pack in North Carolina. That it's lost. They, they both that, lost. They just yeah. lost. Yeah, they both lost <laughs> in the final fours. Yeah, that's really tough. I mean... <laughs> You know, I, I can relate to one side of that with losing in the final four, but uh, can't relate on the other side. But yeah, either way, we're uh, talking about Princess Mononoke, not sports teams named Wolfpacks and the like. But yeah, so let's talk about Princess Mononoke, a film done by Studio Ghibli in 1997. Very, very famous uh, Ghibli film. Very, very well loved and appreciated by a lot of people. Uh, Miles, why don't you start us off with our opening thoughts? Any general thoughts? Because we, I, I, again, it seems like we have a really contested talking point to get to. So why, yeah. why? And since it's a movie, too, I mean, it's spoiler heavy. So try and keep it light. But any general thoughts and opening thought uh, that you'd like to say before we start? And would you recommend it as well? Yeah. So this is the fourth Ghibli movie I watched. I watched Kiki's Delivery Service before I watched this, like same day, and it was it was good. Uh, I really liked this movie. Uh, I think it definitely. I don't necessarily know if it like lived up to the hype because I don't know if anything can like live up to the hype of a movie like this, but I thought it was really good. Like I had a great time. I thought that it was interesting, like the world they lived in, there was a lot of cool elements to it. I thought that it was paced pretty well. And I just had a good time following our main character, sort of seeing him interact with the world and everything. I thought I was like pretty invested in a lot of it, and they did a good job of explaining the motivations and stuff of all of the characters. So, I mean, I would definitely recommend it, right? Like, I, it's a Ghibli movie. Um, I think that the worst you're going to do is, like, enjoy this some amount, you know? I don't think anyone's going to walk away from this movie and be like, wow, I wasted my time here. I think at the very worst, you'll be like, oh, that was an okay movie. Like, I enjoyed watching it, but it wasn't anything special. But I, I thought it was really good, and I definitely see why um, it's so beloved. So definitely recommend, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. There you go. Kat, what about you? So I, this is also my second one, my second Ghibli movie. If first one was uh, Howl's Moving Castle for Watch Club. This was a, this was a really enjoyable movie. I really loved the art style that it took on and the way that it, uh, the way that, the story unfolded and i liked that when i when coming in i really thought that we were going to follow princess mononoke i had a completely different idea of princess mononoke before i came in and i thought we were just going to watch this chick just kill uh just kill like the world lo and behold it wasn't that <laughs> so 
but I had a really, I had a really good time with it, and uh, I would absolutely recommend it. There you go. All right, Pete. What about you? Yeah, I think this is my second watch through of this movie. I think it's like my seventh Ghibli film in general. I uh, kind of forgot that this movie is definitely not made for children. Um, no. <laughs> when Ashitaka was a real shooter and boom headshot somebody off the horse, I was like, God damn! I completely forgot this was a, a, I- a movie. <laughs> Um, I laughed at that during that. It, it was, was so, so funny. it was dope. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. This is this is cool. And then um kind of like I watched this like, I don't even know, seven years ago and I forgot most of it. And then now that I've a little older and realized like kind of like the themes that Miyazaki tries to shoot for in his films, I think I enjoyed this more my second time watching it through. I also think like Miles said, this is a movie where like if you don't want to dive more into this, you don't have to. I think it's enjoyable throughout. But I did like the little mixing and weaving of messages that they did just sort of like they did with Boy and the Heron. However, I think this is like significantly toned down compared to Boy and the Heron. I think it's pretty clear that what the message that they're trying to send in this movie is. And overall, it was just a wonderful experience. And I would recommend it if you're a Ghibli fan. All right, yeah, and uh, Miles, what did you say that uh, the worst case uh, could happen for this movie? Something? Yeah, I think like you, you know, the worst case is like you watch it and you're like, "This is a pretty good movie. I enjoyed it. Nothing special, but had a good time." Yeah, I watched this movie. Is uh, pretty good. Nothing special, and uh, yeah, I recommend it. It's a Ghibli movie. Uh, I, I, so obviously, I, I'm saying that in jest a little bit. I think I'll be uh, one of the lower scores of, of the group uh, personally. I. I don't know. This is what, like my fourth or fifth Ghibli movie as well. Uh, and I, 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 maybe I, again, maybe it's just the hype that people always build up for these movies that I just go in expecting to be absolutely blown away. And I, I just never am really, you know, like I, the, the art is beautiful. The, the movies score and the, the voice acting both dubbed and subbed is really, really good as well. Like the, and and you can see the direction. I just I I kept I, I felt that this movie dragged at a couple different points, which we can talk about. Uh, it felt like twenty minutes longer than it probably needed to be, twenty or thirty minutes long. Like again, like if it was just condensed a little bit more, I might have enjoyed it a bit more. But it was. Uh, but again, like I said, like I still did enjoy it, and I thought the message was very interesting. Uh, I think the characters are very well fleshed out, in uh, especially for a Ghibli movie, because usually they're. Kind of just caricatures of people, I would say. These these were a little bit more in depth than normal, uh, compared to the other Ghibli's I've seen at least. And yeah, so I still would recommend this because it's a movie, Ghibli movie as well, it, and it is beautiful. But again, I just a little frustrated because uh, I expected a little bit more. But that's uh, that's the big thing. Yeah, I guess without further ado, let's uh, get into our talking points. So yeah, we have some uh, spoiler warnings for those who haven't seen the movie yet. If you haven't seen it yet, then what are you doing? It's like the top 100 most popular show ever. What are we doing here? What are you doing listening to an anime podcast? I say I've, after not watching it for five years of being on an anime podcast, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, let, let's start, start it off. Miles, what are you defending here? Like the, the eradication of the world or something? Or, or what is this? So, no, that's Pete's job, right? Oh, so like, oh, for once, <laughs> it's the other way around. Yes. Yeah, so for, I guess like, one of the things a lot of people like in this this movie that I've seen is like a talking point a number of times is how Lady Eboshi uh, is like a good example of like a villain who has like, I guess, like who isn't like purely evil, who's like doing things for a good reason or something like that. And to me, that gets erased, you know, because like you could argue about like, OK, we have to like make arms in general you know, for these people to survive and I'm giving them a good life, you know, take away from that, like plus or minus. But when you're in like, I'm going to go kill the heart of the forest in order to like expand and get like resources from it. To me, whatever your reason is sort of dies a little bit because that is just like, like if you're no matter what you're doing, if you say those words, I need to go kill the forest spirit in order to expand to get more natural resources because the forest doesn't want me taking those you're evil and you should be aware of that if you're ever leading a small village um and that that's my thought that regardless of of how you know good how much good she's done prior to that if this was the deal that she had to make it was a faustian bargain and therefore not worth it adding on to that 
like it's in the later part of the movie where like Ashitaka actually shows up and is like, hey, you need to go back to the village. Your village was getting attacked by samurai who want to kill your people. She's like, nah, I'm going to go ahead and kill them now. Like that, that's that completely removes anything. She was right. right, though. She said that she the women could defend themselves and they did. Like she was 100 percent correct in that take. She knew that the women could defend themselves against that army because they had more advanced weaponry and they were sieged up and they were in their fortress and they held their own until reinforcements came. Like she was a hundred percent correct in that take. But well, they didn't hold up until reinforcements came. They held up until the giant evil demon she well, summoned. The reinforcements the would town. have came regardless. Like they, they would have been there. But I guess well, what I'm Iboshi, her character is set around their village creating arms and that's how they get money. And with that money, she's able to buy and help people that normally wouldn't be able to get help. And then she's put in this position where when the emperor of Japan is saying, go get me the head of the forest spirit, there's not a whole lot you can do. If she says no, she dies. Then the, the village is, is gone. Like, I feel like she, the, the situation that they're in to do this hmm. whole forest spirit thing. Okay. Is, Wait a minute. No, let me finish. Okay. She, I have like three words left. I feel like that okay. she did. <laughs> she really did not have a choice in the matter that this was the only route that she could take where she appeases the emperor. She gets the bag. She could help more people. Okay. You need to, you need to pick a lane here. If, I she will dies, pick a lane. If, she, if she dies, you said the village is done, but previously said, you just said the village is fine without her. They don't well, the village her. is fine without her because of her. They're, okay, in, they're, so in the, is, they're in the position that they are because of her. And is that before or after she killed the the forest spirit? That was before. But she wants okay, to help. So if she, she wants more so, people to be in that position. So do you think that perhaps her expansion is, is greed? You're, is hold on. The, the, everything evil. you're saying is in <laughs> hindsight. Because if you honestly think that this is going to be some giant. If you killed the forest spirit, that this giant 50 foot celestial being is going to come out and start ravaging the forest and destroying everybody. You're out your goddamn mind. There's no way people had that in the back of their head. Like, oh, yeah, a giant celestial being is going to destroy the world. Like, it's your I feel, argument. I feel like. I, yeah, like, doesn't that. Wouldn't. What if she goes to kill it and she dies and then never comes back and then that village. She doesn't have a choice. Dies. She has to go do this. No, she doesn't. Yes, why she does. She just, the emperor why? is make, the emperor. The, how, the whole point. How's the, how the emperor going to kill her? If she doesn't do what the emperor wants her to do, she'll probably get murdered. How? Armies. The, it's okay, the thought, emperor of Japan. They're, what do you mean? How? They're they're siege proof. They're winning. They're not siege they proof. They're fighting. A, they're fighting a militia right now. They're not fighting the Japanese imperial army. Are they not I, fighting the emperor's army? No, That's they're not. not. No, they're fighting a a group of militia samurai. They're fighting a uh, a feudal lords uh, yeah, group. Of yeah, samurai. They're, they're fighting. Yeah, they're 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 not fighting the Japanese imperial army or whatever it is at the time. Did yeah. did Japan have an imperial I don't, army at the they time? Had they had shoguns. They had samurai. Yeah, yeah, but then it weren't. Wasn't that like a person that the same feudal lords that they were fighting were answering to? The lords are like the provinces. Like they're yeah. the emperor is like the overseeing man. He's yeah, but did the emperor have his own imperial army? I or would, was it a series okay. of militias? I would guarantee is, you he does. He's the fucking emperor of Japan. I don't I don't know if that's inherently true. What the, the shoguns had samurai underneath them. They more than likely had yes. like an army. Yes. Yeah. Okay, well they had lords underneath them, and the lords had like like medieval England, I don't think had like a, an army. What they did was like rouse their, their like feudal people and like draft them. Okay. Basically. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know. The, this is, if, we're, if you, we're getting a bit the of <laughs> Did the emperor of Japan have some form of military presence in Japan? I think most people would say yes. Yes, but I, they could have already been fighting a section of it. That's what I, the way I interpreted it was like, those were the samurai for the emperor or the, the start of like the war. Well, that, that's the way I, the, the samurai are attacking Jigo's people who Jigo is contracted essentially by the emperor to get the head. So I don't think it's part of the people that were fighting 
were part of the emperors because we saw that in the scene where Ashitaka boom headshot somebody on the horse. Dude, that shit was ridiculous. Every time, like I, I was watching, I was just like, "Whoa, wait!" Really? It felt like it was from like a video game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it looked, it looked it. really silly too, in my opinion. Like, like out of I don't know, it was just like really. Well, how, arms how, it was too. like very clean, like like yeah. you're taking off like an action figure's arm mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. Yeah. It was always like that's not how arrows work. Like, wow, I actually well, guess I need I to thought, get cursed. I thought some something. of that, yeah, was because of his like his cursed power, as I think what they were showing there. Right. I mean, like he's like a skilled stuff. warrior in general. No, of but, course, but like, yeah, but arrows I, I, don't I, work yeah. like that. <laughs> like, that's why yeah, I was like, I, I, yeah, I thought his and like other people's arrows don't work like that, right? They they shoot the deer elk thing, yep. and it doesn't take off its torso. You know, it like it just gets hit with an arrow. Yeah. yeah. So like his are like, like limb erasing yeah. arrows because he's cursed. He, he bends a fucking sword with his hand. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he does. <laughs> um. So, okay, we kind of just gloss over this because this was one of my main questions coming into this. So that, so Jiko, I, and, or the, that guy, the big, big guy, like, I did not understand, like, did he ally with Iboshi later on or was he already allied with that? That's where I was, I guess, oh, confused. I can explain that. He, I, didn't under, I didn't understand oh, yeah. his... I didn't understand yeah. his role in the movie's grand scheme of things where it wasn't like already being served by Eboshi, I guess. He you know, is like the, part. like the delivery. So he is, his, his goal is to go get the head and bring it to the emperor. Eboshi is like the muscle to get the head. So like Jigo's team teams up with Eboshi's team to get the head of the whatever. Yeah. So he let Iboshi use his rifleman to kill the first time that boar dies, the one at the beginning. Yes. Like they yeah. kill that boar. And so he is tasked from the emperor because he's like the head of the secret group of hunters or whatever to go and get the head of the forest spirit. And so he, like, because it's important to note that the emperor did not ask Lady Iboshi to do this. He asked her to do it uh, because he helped make her basically by like letting her establish that foothold by lending her troops in order to kill the pig god. And so like, she even tries to say she isn't beholden to the emperor and he's like, "Eh, it's not the emperor. You owe me. So, you know, that's why she goes and and helps in there. Also, she seems really enthused about the idea just generally. Like, I think she just like likes the concept because she's a capitalist. She has like multiple. That's what I was saying. She's evil. (laughs) 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 It's triggered me. I'm yeah, never no, gonna knock know. somebody for getting the bag. Like you do. I'm you gonna knock. Yeah. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, arms dealers. Someone who's never been knocked for Have getting the bag. Have you seen Lord of War? It's arms dealers are kind of cool. She also now that arms. is not. Now, I just want to say I never said she wasn't cool. She's really cool. She's <laughs> also evil. Okay. All right. You know, I'll take that compromise. <laughs> She and like, you can be yeah. cool and evil at the same time yeah and and she's like definitely based in like a lot of ways right she has like a very fairly like gender equal society that she's running mm-hmm. she like pays people well she keeps people like she's doing the industry thing right but again to me the line that's crossed is when you're told to go kill the forest spirit you just don't do it <laughs> I say don't knock until you try it this is honestly, oh. you know, the graph of like fucking around and then finding out, finding out. Yeah. So she was fucking around, but I think like on the graph, the finding out part was low. And I think part of the big part of the story is she fucked around and found out way too much. Well, yeah. Do you, did you not expect? Cause like I genuinely expected some horrible retribution from the forest. To I thought the forest would just die. That's where I was oh, like, okay. the, yeah, the heart I of the, when the, when your heart dies, you die. The heart, when the heart of the forest dies, the forest like withers. That's what I was thinking. Like the, the we, soil yeah. goes bad. The trees die. The animals migrate elsewhere. Like it's sort of one Instead, of those things. Everything just works out in the end. Exactly. Uh, oh, Little, little. I know. Kind of, uh, I know. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of like. So that that was my next follow up question slash thought. Because again, I I I did. I guess only watch it today, so it hasn't fully marinated. I guess, but like, 
So, so Ashitaka, you know, has this whole village that he cares about protecting and like, blah, 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 blah. And the girl who gives him her gemstone and, and yeah, back home who loves him and blah, 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 blah. And then he's just like, fuck it. That's I'm here sister. now. And I'm just... That is a sister. Oh, uh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. I, it, it, it never... Well, Saad also <laughs> gives <laughs> Ashitaka a gem, so. I, I didn't see them. Uh, it didn't translate in the sub then to sister. She, she has like is. two lines, so it's possible you just missed uh, it, but it's... it is there. But like okay. it literally only mentions it once and then he never thinks about her ever again. Yep. So yep. right. Well, I guess all right. Well, either way, his, he leaves his family behind. It's just like, yeah, fuck it. I'll stay here. Well, he's, and... he's banished. Yeah. Uh, until he got the curse fixed. No. No, no he, he was banished. He, 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 he had to leave well, the well, village. They don't, they don't think he could get the, the curse fixed. They, yeah, I guess like it, at the end. Yeah. They said like by law, they can't like send him off. Like they said, they said essentially like you got to go. Like you're done. They, they also did. I thought they said that if you f- get yourself fixed, you can come back. Well, but. the whole thing is like a a theory. Like they don't know if they go to the spirit, it will get fixed. They're just like maybe. Right. Like get, here's some hope. Yeah. yeah but it's, so if you do get fixed, I, I, don't know, I, I was just surprised that it was just like, oh yeah, fuck it, yeah, I'm just gonna live here now. I guess you know, like I it, to me it felt weird. There might be some like folk it, because he met, something for it. He mentions multiple times too how he's like doing this for his village or doing this to protect his people. Well, and, he is and the that. prince. Yeah. So that's why I was like, wouldn't you want to, to, to go back, especially when you? <laughs> I mean, I, I again, I, I, well, I, I, well, I just had so many questions after I finished that were were frustrating to me. Um, they also kind of addressed it in the um, in the beginning where they were like, "Hey, this is." like where people that were in the village were like, Hey, you're like, all of us are old. We don't have many descendants. Why are you sending our prince out? And it's like, because we don't, we're all going to die. And we'd better, we'd rather have the chance of surviving without him than keeping him here and having the surety of us all dying. Um, I, I, that, that's not the part I think that, that confuses me. I, it's, it's why he doesn't want to go back. Yeah, you know, he, like, I don't. I never got the sense that he wanted to. Or he says yeah. it multiple times. I do. Remember I don't that. think. I, I remember him being like, "I can't ever go back, and I'm just here until I die." Sub yeah. or dub? Uh, dub. Dub. Sub, sub was different then. I guarantee. I I promise you because I that I specifically remember again. Maybe I missed the sister line, or I really don't think I did because I was like, I, I mean, I watched his sub, and just, he they clearly say it's a sister. Okay, man. I guess I missed it, but he, he very specifically says, "Oh yeah, I, I do want to go back." Or like, I, uh, I do. I once I am cured, I can go back. Like, because yeah, I, I don't remember him in the sub. Yeah, I remember I him. <laughs> I, I, why, why would I make this up? I like, don't I, know. I don't know why you I, would. Like, <laughs> like, I say it happened multiple times. That's why I was like, I, "Are you guys gaslighting me right now?" Like, no, I, it I, might I, be I, two I different, uh, two different sub uh, authors. I, we both watched off HBO Max. So oh, yeah. well, there are know. there are there are lines about him being mad about what happened to his village, like when he's talking to the people in Iron Town and everything. Like I definitely remember that where he says, like, you did this, which caused this thing to attack my village, and like I'm mad at you for that. Yeah. But I don't don't remember him saying, I want to go back home ever. My Same. I generally just think that he like my interpretation of it was that he was just planning on dying the entire time. I, I I agree with that, but I I do I don't know I I, I very specifically remember uh, it. Ha- I guess I'll, I'll have to go back and find it because because it did happen. I, I, I'm I'm very confident in that. But either either way, I guess so. That's maybe that why my frustration where my frustration comes from because it's like oh yeah, surprise! I do want to just stay here and love this girl who I've how I, I guess they saved each other's lives. So there's that connection. But like, did they? It was, I mean, it's a little fairy tale, tale-y, right? Like, right. Like, this is based on very much folk tales. Like, like they, they love each other because they love each other. It is the interpretation I got. But like, I don't know. With the type of story it is, that's more or less what like I expect. Like, you yeah. know, like this. You know, I, I don't know. Like, oh, the prince and the princess love each other because they do. I still think that it, I was just so confused by like the love thing that came out. It, I didn't it, like yeah, it. I guess is my biggest complaint about the movie. So in the, I, like again, it, like why? What, what's the point? Like are they they 
why would they love each other? Like, you know? Yeah, like, like, why can't you just be, like, cool? Or, like, because at the end, they're like, I love you. I love you, too. But I hate humans. So, like, I can't live with you. And he's just like, I'll come hang out in the forest sometime. And she's like, cool. And then they're like, all right, peace out. And then that was it. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Into the forest that flourished with life unbeknown bef- to before, after its spirit deity died. That, <laughs> like... <laughs> I don't know. I, that, that's where I, I, so I was just like, really? This is how it ends? This is, this is it? Like, it went to the credits and I was like, oh, there's more, right? <laughs> it's like, no, this is an older movie. So there's nothing after the credits. Like, God damn it. <laughs> like, what the hell? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Maybe I mean, you want to talk more yeah, about that, I, I guess, Lynn? That's a good talking point, right? Like, like what, what we thought of this ending in general. It seems like we're all in agreement, though, that it was weird. Well, and... I, for different reasons, well, I guess. For like, different reasons, I didn't for know. sure. Yeah, I didn't mind them being in love just because, again, it's like a folk tale sort of thing, and the source material for it is like various folk tales and everything, and just it's like, that's such a common thing in those stories where people just love each other, like at first sight, and you know, like a Romeo and Juliet kind of deal, you know, um, like they don't even talk to each other <laughs> for a minute; they're just like, "Wow, y'all are hot," and you know, so like. <laughs> You know, there's like a long history of that. So it's, it's not like my favorite thing. Like I would obviously prefer a fleshed out romance, but yeah. if it something like this happens, it's fine. For me, my issue with the ending was the, the two antagonists who again, just murdered God. were like, uh, I guess I won't, I won't be evil anymore. Okay, sorry. A God um, are very like, I guess I won't be evil anymore. And it's like, why? Why would you stop being evil? Why wouldn't you continue being evil? You just achieved what you were trying to do. And now you're like, all right, cancel that. I'm good instead. Like, ah. Well, they didn't achieve because they needed the head to prove it or whatever. And they didn't get that. But right. But they did what they had to. So, yeah. So now the emperor is still going to come knocking, you know? So, shit. All right. Well, I guess we just live now. And, and there stop, was no like giving them iron too. It, it, like you know? he also gave them so many chances to like do the right thing, which was frustrating to me. And then they never did. And in fact, they kept doing the wrong thing as hard as they could. And then there was just like no retribution for it, which was sometimes like there's no retribution for doing the wrong thing. Only non-named characters died. <laughs> <laughs> At the pig they died a lot. Well, the pig died. Okay, cool. But like, I mean, and, the humans and the wolf. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, th- oh, the who's wolf- the human here? Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Let's get theoretical here. Yeah. No, but you're right. Yeah, that's fair. The wolf and the the, the pig dying. Four. They like talked and stuff. They're they're human enough. I, I guess like they're not human specifically. It's actually a major theme in this. But like, you know what I mean. Mm. <laughs> they're intelligent enough for me to count. Or are they humans? Oh. Wow. So, so are, are we talking about that. the ending right now? Because yeah, yeah, go ahead. So, like, talk about it. so I did some digging about like what the ending is supposed to mean, and Miyazaki based it off of like a quote. Uh, the quote's "God is dead." It's by a philosopher named Frederick Nietzsche. Nietzsche. And the yeah. quote is, and "We have killed him." Yeah, the belief in the Christian God has become unbelievable. Everything that was built upon his faith, propped up on it, grown into it, including the whole. European mortality is bound to collapse. So it's like this idea that you're building up a God and now the God is dead based off of whatever you're building it up on. And that's kind of like the, how Miyazaki wanted to end the movie. So like, I thought that was like interesting, but like, if you don't know that that's so fucking random, (laughs) but like, I don't know. I thought that was kind of cool. Like when I did some more digging on it, like that's kind of like the message that it was supposed to be sending that like God is dead. And then, uh, one of the quotes at the end of it, it's like, even though the forest still prospers, it's not my forest or something along those lines where like, even though like life continues, it's like not ever going to be the same. And I think that's sort of like, I don't know. I, I, I like the duality a lot between the, the consequences of the humans and sort of like moving forward with it because we see it in like everyday life with like de- deforestation for like cattle and our agriculture and stuff like that where that's like a huge emphasis in this movie is like environmental stuff and like how greed essentially can destroy our world. And like, I don't know. I I just thought that like, it was, it was kind of bittersweet where like, but this is also my viewpoint where I don't think anybody's good nor evil in this movie that, you know, like sometimes like, that's just what happens. Like we just move on and things 
move on to like the next stage of our life. And, you know, maybe it's not as great as it was before, but we survive, we prosper in some way. Like we will, we will evolve to make the best that we can of the situations that we have. And I felt like that's kind of like what happened where it's like, yeah, we killed the forest spear, but like, we're still alive and it sucks, but you know what? We're just going to keep moving on. It's kind of just like, like a metaphor for like life too. I feel like we're like, you kind of just like, sometimes shit sucks and you just find ways to like keep moving forward. And I think that's kind of like the message that I got towards the end of the movie. Hmm. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I, I'm not like an expert on Nietzsche or anything. I wouldn't have ever guessed that this was related to that though. Yeah. Just the um, ending. Yeah. Yeah. Even, even the ending, I, I, th- I don't know, I'm not going to show how ignorant I am about philosophy, but like, I, this just means I should look into it. Um, yeah, there's some cool video essays about diving into like the meanings and stuff behind this movie. A lot of like the folklore and mythology to it. Yeah, but like I yeah I don't like I guess like to me the issue is that it, I I just would never trust someone who perpetrated that act to uh, behave accordingly after the fact. Like like I think if you don't actually deal with like the root cause of issues and the you know, it's it's sort of like when they they threw Hitler in prison, <laughs> not to have the internet conversation go to Hitler, and then they were like, okay, you did your time, you come out again, and then like he immediately took over. It was like very dead dove dot giffy, um, you know. So like, I, I guess I wouldn't have been surprised that if in twenty years uh, they had burnt that forest to the ground and for Iron sure, town, now Iron City. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I th- I think that's part of it, right? Like, I think that it's like either way, if they want to expand that the forest someone's gonna have to like one side's gonna lose like in this case it's the environment you saw it in the beginning when okoto the boar is sort of fed up with it and tries to fight back and then that's how he gets possessed by the like the demon the anger demon or whatever and i think that's like part of like the duality of this entire story is that in order for us to progress as society, you know, we have a higher population. We need to build more houses in order to build more houses. We need to chop down trees. When we chop down trees, animals and whatever lose their homes and then they have to move wherever. And that's like part of it. And I, and I, I like that duality because I think there comes to a certain point where doing that too much, there's no turning back. And I think that's kind of like what one of the points was with this, where it's like, you're instead of slowly destroying the forest, you're just killing it. And that's like literally the fucking around and fighting out part of the graph. And I think that's like a major part of like a major, like a takeaway from the movie that people should get is like, you get to a point where it's just like, it's too late. Like you you can't turn back from this. What's the, like, I guess it, to me, if you want to have like a message like that, you need it actually needs to be too late and it like it isn't too late for them at the end well it's too late for the because the magic though well, well the, oh, yeah, mean, but the, I, mag- the magic is metaphorical right like it's not i real. mean they kill a god and he's gone forever so like that's like a huge thing and do we know he's gone forever yes yeah he's yes dead. yeah yeah when he falls and all of the wind comes up it is that's kind of the finality of it. it. It's, I think what I was trying to say was that like when the sun comes up, the night Walker is dead. He got his head back, but as soon as he got his head back and started to try and get back to the forest, he died at the end of the, because he wasn't quick enough to get back. The deer God is dead. Yeah. Like, it, it, yeah. Yeah. Well, is, is he dead or is he like living within the forest? I think now? he's dead, dead. He, He's dead, but I think, but I think what Ashitaka was saying was that, like, you know, he died, but like all of his essence came back and is, uh, and is growing again. So basically, there's no forest spirit to protect it, but the forest is still there. Because the Kodama come back after the the deer god dies, but the deer god itself, because that that's part of the line with Ashitaka where he says like. The forest is regrowing, but it'll never be the, like the forest again because like the the deer god is gone. Like the only way to kill the deer god was to decapitate him, and they did that. They just yeah. wanted his head, giving back the head, sort of like put the body back, but then the sun killed 
the spirit. Mm-hmm. I'm almost I'm like 98 percent sure that's the case. Yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised if that I guess like my confusion would then come from like what did the what did he do? The forest spirit? Yeah. Like in general, like what was his role? Sure. Uh he decided what lived and what died in the forest. He was okay. he was like, so the, like he's are, the ecosystem of the forest. Yeah, okay, so who's deciding that now? We don't know. I, I think that's part of like the regrowth. It's sort of like it's like you ever heard like the phrase with like climate change going on where like like the earth will be fine, like we're the ones that are in, tr- in trouble. Like with the you will evolve to okay, I'm don't give me that face. I'm trying to give you an example. It's sort of like the thing where it's like the forest, like the forest is not the same, but it will it will live. It's just not going to be the same as it was before. Because we see that with the Kodama coming back after the fact, but I'm almost certain that the dear God was killed in the process. So it's like they'll still have the forest. It's just not going to be the same that it was before. I think that's kind of the point. Oh yeah. Okay. So I guess my problem with that then is that we won't still have the forest. I mean, we will physically have the forest, but like it's like no, no. it's like the like the ecosystem is going to change because like I, maybe think of it's like like you know this is gonna sound crazy. Think of it like as there's one city in the world, and then there's a bunch of police, and then all the police are gone, and then it's like yeah, okay, now it's gonna get a little bit crazy it's like, because it's, it's like really cool now it's way cooler but like it's also a little bit chaotic because the person who or the people that were governing the space are no longer there it's like when you were in high school and the teacher went to the bathroom and it got a little chaotic i feel like that's what it's going to be like I, I so i guess like okay again so like we have rampant industrialism competing with nature right yeah. yes and then and then at the end, they kill they kill the forest spirit. Yes. And so, like, I guess is the idea, like, if we stop doing this industrialism, sure, we won't get the original forest back, but everything won't go to hell. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, like, I, I guess that makes sense. I can like rectify that. I feel like head. you I can interpret just... it in a bunch of different ways. Like, I yeah, I, I really don't... do feel like, based off of your experience, you can interpret like all of that in a completely different manner. Yeah. One of the things that I wanted to talk about is like Ashitaka being, I feel like part of, part of, part of one of the, uh, one of the, the motives behind the story is that is the decisiveness of your, uh, of your actions, specifically Ashitaka. Ashitaka has the, like, we see that this curse gives him the power to be decisive with the things that he can do. And what we see is him basically trying to play mediator between both the industrialism and the nature aspects of the, of the forest. But I feel like part of the blame can be put on him because he didn't decide what to do. He could have stopped the uh, he could have stopped the industrialization. It would have it wouldn't have been great. I don't think he, he could have stopped have. it. There's no Ashitaka can't stop that entire city by himself. I I feel like he could have. Maybe I guess with the the anger demon inside of his arm, but like that's also not his role to play. Like. He wants to like at the end of the movie. He wants to live there. Like he likes that society. Like I, yeah, I, I don't. But, I don't think his decisiveness has anything to do with like that outcome. Maybe I was reading it wrong, but it it it, it felt like in the dub, like when he was basically told to go on, try and find the forest spirit, and you know get healed from this curse. It felt like he like he had the options of you know trying to help the forest versus trying to help the humans and dying. And that, that was the way that I read into it personally. I mean, he was definitely trying to play both sides to this. He definitely did not want the the forest spirit to get killed though. I thought that was pretty clear. He was definitely trying to stop that aspect of it, Hmm. but yeah, I, I don't know if him picking like one side specifically would have been a better outcome because I can kind of I I think that kind of like leads to my my thoughts on this where I don't think either side is good nor evil. 
that way because he didn't really pick a side he was just trying he was doing what he thought would work out the best for both sides and that mm-hmm. is kind of a little bit of a downfall on him because of the outcome i think okay i can see that uh but miles your reincarnation thing i think that's that that cycle of the forest spirit is like but it's like a phoenix rising from the ashes right like Phoenix dies and then they get reborn. But I think that with the spirit is that he dies and gets reincarnated in the exception of him losing his head. That like that cycle stops. Yeah. So it says if the four, uh, the four spirit transforms into the night Walker at midnight to collect souls of organisms yep. and to cultivate the forest. If it loses its head, it becomes a deathly threat. So it losing its head, like activated it in an enraged part of the encounter. And when they give it back, I think it goes back to normal is my understanding from it. Uh, I think I get some more clarification because from the, the video essays that I watched, it, it seemed like the pretty much the conclusion was that the forest spirit is dead, dead. But maybe somebody else can link me something that I didn't get. Yeah, correctly. I mean, it's from it's definitely Buddhism, indeci- apparently. apparently it's indecisive within the community, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just reading the Ghibli fandom wiki, so it's not like the definitive. No, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I, I, I guess for me personally, if the forest spirit is still alive, and like people have learned that they can't cull this, on one hand, like I like that because that's like I guess a good message. On the other hand, like we definitely can though. Yeah, and like there are consequences to that. You know, and like, I, I don't know, I guess like that's my issue is that you have people, you have like a group of people who are like, for whatever reason, doing things that should have like irrevocable consequences yep. that, in my opinion, don't don't really. Well, um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think because like Iboshi loses her arm, like that's a pretty big consequence to her action. Sure. Um, like, I guess. I mean, you might not agree with it, but that's definitely a consequence to her action. It is. I don't necessarily know if it's... Of uh, her city burnt to the ground that she built. Well, that's her fault. Um, I mean, so, like, (laughs) she she definitely has consequences. Everything that she built is gone. Yeah, but they're just going to rebuild it. Yeah, but it's going to take a very, very long time. It's going to take four months i know it's gonna take (laughs) yeah unless this is the egyptians they have the aliens helping them build pyramids it's gonna take longer than four months rome wasn't built in a day but iron town was oh you know this has (laughs) roman like folktale in it with um was it romulus i think his name is who was raised by wolves he raised by wolves yeah yeah Yeah. forget remus yeah remus and romulus this is part of well that's the first time i've heard their names in that order that was weird is it romulus and remus I mean, it, I don't think it actually matters, but yes. Oh, my bad. The video that I watched <laughs> said Rebus and Robulus, so. Oh, that's horrifying to oh. me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, look, Change Rome is isn't named scary. after Remus. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, um, I don't know if anybody else has some talking points, but I did some like folklore digging that I thought was pretty cool. That No, I, I would love to hear about it. I think that's neat. Um, like oh, So like Ashitaka, like their region of that people is based off of sort of, and Pat might like this, a little bit of the Inu people from Golden Kamui. So it's like the pre-ancestors of that. So like they were known for, this is the same thing in Mongolia with uh, the people who are archery off of like horseback riding. Like that was like a real thing in that, that area of that region. So being that was pretty cool. Um, Moro, the, the wolf God is actually based off of like a Fox God. There's a, um, there's a scene in the movie where you see Moro, her tail is split into two. And so that's to indicate how many centuries that they're alive. So it's like, when you see like a nine tail Fox, that's supposed to represent like 900 years of living each hundred years, you get like another tail. So that was like to indicate that Moro was 200 years old because in the folklore, um, Moro is a Fox, not a, uh, not a wolf. So I thought that was cool. The Kodama is, so Mononoke, like her her gown or like her war outfit that she wears, along with Kodama, are based off of South American um like Aztec tribes. Uh Miyazaki based it off of a manga that is based off of like an Aztec tribe called Mudmen. So it's just really cool this pulling in different sort of like folklore from other countries into this. I thought it was like a nice mix of like mythology and folklore and stuff and putting that all together. And then 
the resemblance of like the boars themselves are based off like the Chinese Zodiac. The, the, the determination of the boar is seen throughout the movie. And that's one of the qualities of being like the year of the boar. Like you're born with de determination and you see that with the boars being the ones to lead the charge, essentially like they are the front line. And so there's a lot of like really cool folklore and myth lore within Princess Monoke, where if you want to dive into it, it's there. It, I thought it was like really fun seeing like a movie like this where on on face value, it's very entertaining. And if you want to dive into more of it, there's so I only touched this. I only scratched the surface. There's so much more that goes into Princess Mononoke than just what you see. So I love that shit about anime. It's the same reason why like Evangelion is one of my favorite animes. If you want to dive in and find hours and hours and hours of content of what these characters are based off of, it's there. Yeah, I liked the masks uh, that uh, or the mask that San wears. Uh, remind me, I had recently gone to an art museum that had masks like just exactly the same from ja both Japanese mythology and then also like other cultures too. It was very like African cultures as well. It was very very cool to see. I was just like, oh, that looks exactly like one we saw. Like. And then um, other people have shared it already and kind of talked about it, like Legend of Zelda. There's mm -hmm. like very clear inspiration going on, especially with the most recent two games from either this movie or just also then from the lore or the mythology or whatever, um, which I think is, is pretty cool to see. I just don't care for Kadamas. They were, they were there. I thought they were a little cute. But I was just like, all right, here's Miyazaki doing that thing again. Like it remind, you know, probably I didn't like it because it reminded me of the boy in the, the Wara Waras from Bar of the Heron. Yeah, yeah, that's why I and I didn't they, like it. I, these I are a little different. bit more spookier in folklore. Say if you went to the Kodama tree and you cut down the tree, they would just curse you and kill you. And in this movie, though, they seemed really cute and fun. <laughs> Like, I, I, yeah. I thought they were kind of spooky in this but they're, they they're spooky but like they never like harm them and, and yeah, actually in one fact true. they guide them to where they need to go but like in in folklore like if you fuck with them they'll just kill you which i thought was um, remind, they kind of reminded me of the uh the i forget the name of it like the little things at animal crossing that that are kind of decorations that dance uh to the music around it i don't remember the names of them but um they have like three faces and they're meant to signify like the places where spirits are supposed to be held. That's what a that's what they reminded me of. I I didn't have any other uh I didn't really have any other reference point for that. So with the four spirit like collecting uh collecting the spirits, I thought that those were like the spirits of the dead walking around the forest. Girls last tour. It reminds me of the Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Really? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that was like the vibe I got from them. I don't know. I, I, I thought this movie was real. I, I guess like we were like talking about like if these people were like evil or not and then some confusion with the ending. So I just want to say like really quickly, like even if she's evil, I think like she's like a uh, like Urbo, she's like a really interesting character. I think the town folk is like they're interesting. The town is very vibrant and full of life, um, which I thought was great. And, you know, I, I think that if she hadn't been literally murdering the spirit of the forest, there would be like a much more nuanced argument to have about her expansionism into like a natural area because she is providing shelter for, you know, uh, disenfranchised people, uh, lepers, right. women who didn't have a place. Courtesans. Um, yeah, exactly. Like, I think it shows that she really, like she definitely cares about humans in an interesting way, but she almost does it too much where she isn't willing to like live within the confines that we need to live in, in order to keep going. You know, you sort of have to think of the whole, unfortunately, instead of like your own little thing. And that's obviously like an extremely difficult thing to do. And I'll never have to do it because I'm never going to have to make any important decisions in my life. <laughs> on that scale. But <laughs> ever uh, I, pre president miles coming coming soon i salute you um, commander in chief i acknowledge be, you as my commander in chief i'd be so bad at it i'd be like you know what i just think this is the right thing free to do. pizza for everyone <laughs> that's what i do I... first first executive order free pizza for everyone Woo, you got my vote <laughs> yeah i really enjoyed the um so I watched the dub, and in the dub, Eboshi was um, Eboshi was like British or like you know English. 
she she had the accent while everybody else had like more of a more of a typical American accent or like correct English accent. Um, but the I kind of like the way that they had that they had that dichotomy between them where like everyone else had that had their had an American accent. She had a British accent and it showed that she was that she wasn't scared of the gods and she viewed things differently, possibly because she was from a different place. And I I kind of enjoyed the way that that was actually highlighted in the casting of either the casting or the accents that the actor was using just to like kind of separate her out from uh, from all the other characters. I wonder if she was like, like a lady of some sort like you know like from because she is lady Boshi, but like i don't know exactly if they say that she's from like some sort of noble line or whatever but a lot of times when you have like a random british person they're supposed to be fancy she might be because of how like skilled she is in combat makes me think that she's from a higher upbringing because like i feel like common women wouldn't have the technique that she has yeah yeah. So I think that's safe to assume uh, that she's probably I don't know if a no, noble yeah. is the right term, but she like, was a courtesan apparently. Oh, but okay. maybe she was like like a high yeah. one who mm-hmm. had like a like a Mau Mau kinda. Yeah. yeah. Mau Mau. Gay gay. <laughs> Most importantly, let's just watch the, Apothecary Diaries. <laughs> yeah, the, wor- yeah. The, the worst part of Princess Mononoke is that Mau Mau isn't in it. True. Um, she would yeah. have just poisoned everyone, and both nature and the humans would have died. Would yeah. Mau Mau <laughs> kill the forest spirit? To, yes, but to eat him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> she would be the forest spirit now. Yeah. <laughs> um, she she wouldn't do it for nefarious reasons. She would just be like, I wonder what would happen if, yeah. <laughs> if I killed the forest spirit. Um, which might be more evil, some people might say. Yeah, but it's Mao Mao, so she gets people. a pass. A hundred percent. Before we start wrapping up, I just want to say, since this is a Ghibli film, I want to talk on the like the technical stuff of it. Like I thought this was just beautifully animated. Um, I was really stood out by like how they animated Yakul's movements. I really enjoyed like the horse scenes, uh, the elk scenes that with these animals moving at the pace that they were at. Uh, you could tell that like Miyazaki takes like seven years to make a movie because yep. even for a movie made in 97, I thought the animation to this was just like, it's so, it's so good. Even like the little like fight scenes that they had were fantastic as well. So uh, gotta give a, uh, credit where credit's due the sound design was so awesome the, like the omniance of being in the forest i thought was like really well done uh the soundtrack didn't really stick out to me but um i thought it was like fine in general but you know we watch ghibli movies for a specific reason and there's one thing that we're never going to be disappointed in when miyazaki is the director is that this is going to stand out in terms of eye candy so props for props is due. it does the clothes thing you like to point out so much um where like people like move their clothes it's, and like it's so good yeah. It, yeah it's like literally my favorite thing in like free red in terms of animation <laughs> is how they move their clothes it's like he put a jacket on like jesus christ this is peak yeah like yeah. <laughs> when he co- when he like walks in like some of the women like cover up yep. a little bit yeah and like others don't or whatever it's like, well, very, like he's hot like, as fuck yeah <laughs> hey yeah. yo yeah. what's up uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, th- I thought that was interesting uh, like a lot of really good animation uh, from it. I mean, it looked very pretty. I don't. Mm. I don't think anyone can say otherwise. Yeah. Do final thoughts? I think so. Yeah, let's do them. Okay. Uh, Miles, why don't you leave stuff off with your final thoughts and your final score for Princess Mononoke? I really like this movie. I I think it's uh, like gorgeous. I think that it has a pretty compelling story. It definitely has compelling characters. You know, some minor flaws to touch on. Like, I'm not exactly sure what the moral I'm supposed to take away from this is. Um, maybe I just, like, believe in redemption less than Miyazaki does, and that, <laughs> that's fine. Like, that's a pretty high bar, to be perfectly honest. So I'm I'm happy coming in underneath it. 
uh you know the romance some people said it's not great so like don't watch this as romance but I, I definitely didn't mind that at all and i think that they they sort of fit together it was more of like a symbolic joining than anything uh, i was fully invested the entire time the ending was a little meh to me like it was sort of like a seven out of ten ending but i think overall i'm gonna give this an eight out of ten i i did i did very much enjoy it there we go all right cat what about you i really enjoyed this movie i thought it was uh I I really do understand why Ghibli is uh Ghibli is the name that it is. It's it's Princess Mononoke is not my favorite Ghibli movie out of the two, but it is definitely in my top 100 uh anime, probably top 25 currently. But yeah, Princess Mononoke was just an enjoyable watch from the sound design to the uh to the little the little details when the when the force was growing back and it just it felt like for a while like it was just going to stay there and then you could see how they took their time making sure that there were only small details that came back to green until it was obviously vibrant again and i I really enjoyed those little uh those little details that they added into the uh to like the background art as well, not just the animation. And uh I the the romance is one of the things that I will that I do dislike about it. It's just I wish that they had a little bit more uh dialogue in it instead of oh god, you're cute, oh god, we're oh god, we're you know, we're lovers and you know that I'm not a huge fan of fairy tales shit like that. But other than that, I really enjoyed I really enjoyed Princess Mononoke. Overall, I'm gonna give this a nine out of ten. Ten. All right. What about you? Yeah, normally I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of Ghibli films, and this is no exception. I think this is probably like my fourth favorite Ghibli film, which I it's still pretty good. Um, I, I'm with everybody else. I thought the romance didn't really make a whole lot of sense considering that San has lived with wolves her entire life. And she, I feel like she doesn't really understand the concept of like romantic love. So that kind of like threw me for a loop a little bit because I just, it felt forced, but like outside of that, there's so many great things to say about this. Like the duality between uh, good and evil, pick, picking and choosing your choices and the repercussions that you have with these choices, how far you can push your limits based off of what you decide that you're going to do in life and that type of stuff. I really liked it. Like, like Eboshi was like my favorite character by a mile. I loved everything about her. I loved how she was. It, it's like the concept of like a, ch- a chief in your village or whatever. Like you will do something for the betterment of your village, even if it means, you know, either like harming yourself or maybe in this case, the entire forest. So, like I, I like that dichotomy of like trying to picking and choosing. Um, actually, you know, I say Iboshi is my favorite character. Actually, my favorite character is Yakul. Just a great boy. You know, um, when San got let him off his leash, he's like, "You're free now," and he's just like, "Nah, I'm gonna stick with the homie." Like, like that. That's my boy. I'm not gonna leave him to die in the water like this. Love that. That's yeah. Cool is a real one. Uh, this movie was fantastic. I loved it. The rewatch was better the second time through than the first. I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, I'm probably the biggest naysayer here. I still enjoyed it though. A lot of pretty things on screen. I thought like two thirds of the way through the movie, I was sitting there a little Right. What are we? What's going on? I, I felt pretty lost. I, I was confused by certain, like how I I was very confused on how Jiko Bo was like connected beyond just being like a whisper in the ear of Iboshi. I didn't understand why he existed at all, or like why his people existed or, or were involved. There were a lot of frustrations, I think, with that. Uh, that. I just experienced. I don't know. I, I, it didn't, it didn't fully resonate with me. I, I agree with Miles too. I didn't really understand where I was supposed to end up at the end of the movie too, which is something that usually frustrates me with Miyazaki films. I've noticed. Uh, <laughs> uh, I want to be able to figure out what he's trying to say, or 
what I should be feeling. And I often, in three out of the four of them that I've watched, have been lost and not known what I, what he wants me to think. So, uh, and I don't like that. So yeah, at the end of the day, that was really well animated, very pretty, very good voice acting. I agree the soundtrack wasn't like that notable, but it wasn't bad. Either. It was still very like atmospheric and fitting for what was going on. So I think seven out of 10 is where I'm going to land just because I didn't enjoy it as much, but I, I still think technically it's a, it's a very pretty and, and impressive film. And, and I did like the characters a lot more than I normally do in a Ghibli movie. I, I really enjoyed the way Iboshi, Ashitakas and, and San all just talk the way they interact with their, with their peers. I, I really did appreciate that a lot. So seven out of 10 for me, but that, uh, that brings our total aggregate score average score out to an 8.25 gosh i love it when there's four of us because it's such easy math so yeah 8.25 that's a little bit lower than uh the mouse score of an 8.66 which i was kind of surprised it's that high just because there's a lot of ghibli haters out there you know i think there's a lot more ghibli fans out yeah there. there's way more Probably, yeah. <laughs> he has his own I theme guess. park in japan <laughs> yeah no i know yeah. well i just feel like you know like you see like, some fam- like big series just get bombed though it may not bombed like but you know what i mean like, i don't know just sabotaged i guess but uh but yeah fair enough uh i guess this is popular enough that like if you make a mal and only put like four shows on it this is going to be one of those four potentially you know or, or whatever so i and and you're probably going to love it so that makes sense but yeah all right i guess that wraps up our uh, discussion of princess mononoke miles what are we watching for our next watch club on whatever date we do it yes in third place, we have Uma Musume. Boom, boom, dirty, dirty. boom. Let's go. Um, I just want to shout out myself um, for chasing after some votes that I knew would put this into third because it was a pretty distant third. It's not a very popular show. It doesn't really ever get that many votes, and no one should waste their time voting for it. You thought. <laughs> you thought. <laughs> you thought. Uh, but if it wasn't for me and my generosity, it wouldn't even be on this list, and I want that clear. In second, we had Vivi, uh, which earns its third legacy point. And in first place, we have Tower of God. Let's go! <laughs> so Tower we of God, are we, so back! <laughs> so we will be watching Tower of God for our next... Uh, I, would, next I, would like to, I would like to quote Kat from like two weeks ago, which was, I don't think I'll ever win ever again. So There you go. <laughs> well... There you I go. feel like a Kansas City Chiefs fan right now. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, sweet. So yeah, we'll be watching Tower of God. We'll, we'll, I can't wait to the Rachel discourse. defend my the Rachel discourse because that is something that I, I know I'm right with. So No, you're fucking not. Uh, you're so yeah. It's crazy. I'm you so are. It's so, I, so given right. the context of the story that we've seen so far, I am so right, and I can't wait to be <laughs> right. The story, you are so wrong. No, it's, well, like, again, it's going to be very similar to the discussion we had this week about what's morally right or wrong. I think it's very interesting you're doing doing what's right for yourself versus what's right for your village. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> so it's the same funny. thing in this context. No, it's true. I, again, no, it, well, it, it I is could, hilarious. Cause I think you are missing some major context to that. Right. Well, the major context hasn't been done in the story yet though. No, so that's why I've had, I, this think, I think you just it, missed it. <laughs> yeah. I well, really we will do. find we out. We will find we, out. We'll find, we, we, we will find out will. in two weeks. Cause I'm pretty, I, I don't know. I remember it, even when we talked about it, it was different. Like, yeah, I get later in the story. Maybe they do more of it, but yeah. Um, what? I'm shooting an arrow. Cause what? we got third place. I'm shooting a three. Oh, like I hit a three. A three point okay. Eight. Oh yes. Okay. Ooh, uh, like, a third. Like Caitlin Clark didn't do uh, yeah, uh, it, a lot of. She was like four of nine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, slam the under. Uh, I know she's never playing in the NCAA tournament again, but if she was, uh, the under Caitlin Clark was an amazing bet. Um, yeah, it's Sweet. not her fault. It's just she's overhyped because she's like the only player people could name. So that's what happens outside of sure. Connecticut, sure. yeah, or South Carolina. Y- yeah. Yes, the general. And Louisiana, and you Tennessee. know, we kind of sucked this year. Tennessee, we were, we were like a four seed, weren't we? We, yeah. I lived we? in Knoxville. The Lady Volunteers. Oh, 
That's right. You did live in Tennessee. I, so that's who you're a fan of, and you're well. I mean, I, I like. They're, I guess now they're my second favorite women's college basketball team behind Gonzaga. But I grew up. I mean, Candace Parker. I watched so much of. Fair enough. She, you know, Badass so, lady. Yeah. yeah, she's amazing. Anyways, that's our that's our women's basketball talk. Women's basketball discourse. <laughs> yeah, I don't watch yeah, basketball. You got you got men. Yeah, start very soon or just did right so, now. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I get, let's, what let's a get. what a start time. Nine. I know nine twenty on a Monday night. It's because of the eclipse. Obviously, wink, wink. Yeah, that's <laughs> why. Uh, no, it's pathetic. Games out west, I guess. So it makes some sense, but still. Sweet. All right. Yeah. Let's do our nominations for God. I mean, this will be like a month from now, right? Because we're yeah, doing these God. so back to back. Yeah. So, pretty close to a month. Oh, yeah. It's a ways away, but either way, what are we nominating for our next thing? And well, like, yeah, next month, Cinco de Mayo. So it has to have no, yeah, like a, a Mexican theme. So Mega Labox season one. I'll do Mega Labox season two. Tequila uh, Gundam. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll do <laughs> that one. <laughs> There's got to be something with a, like a chupacabra in it, right? Or something. I, I probably. Don't know. Yeah. probably. Anime. There's got to be an anime that has it. Like maybe a fate has some Mexican deity. Gilgamesh is like, from Mexico. Okay, there's something. Is he? Oh, wow. Yeah. Gilgamesh there is actually is. Spanish. Okay, there is a four volumes of a manga called uh, Sujiru-san and Chupacabra. Look at that. <laughs> so that's what we're reading <laughs> we're for reading. our next watch club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but all right, yeah, let's just do regular nominations. Uh, what, Miles, what have you got? Because uh, I'm sure you're prepared. This time. As always, I am prepared. I'll just re up what I did last time, but I do realize that that is not something that that was actually said on the episode last week. So <laughs> the doctor one, right? Yeah, with the bear and like it's avant garde and Tone Dog loves it, which is like, are you nominating Tekken? Yes, yes. I'm nominating Tekken Bloodline. Tekken. Tekken. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it's Tekken. Uh, it's called Kuchu Bukurado. That one. I don't know if it has an English title, but Kuchu. Baraco Welcome to Irabu's office. N- the NHK. Welcome to the what? NHK. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, right here, yeah. There you go. All right, whatever that show Miles just said was. Yeah, sweet. Cat, what are you nominating? Since it's not Tower of God anymore. It's been long enough. I think we need to do a revisit. No, <laughs> I'm nominating Akadama Drive. Oh, that's a good one that's for really Pat one to for Pat about. to do when we have our hater episode. Yeah, again, yeah. I've already got oh, like yeah. three that I have to do, but yeah, I'm, I'm a hater by having it at like a six or a seven. I care a seven, I think, is what I ended up with. Like yeah. we've established that eight out of ten is the hater score. Correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, apparently. yeah. So you're right. No, I mean, well, I you know, mouse score is below an eight. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. What the Akadama? Yeah, yeah I'm pretty it's like, sure it's like a, a seven, seven, seven or seven, something. Seven six. seven six. As you say, it keeps going down. I wonder why. Um, five nine. I think it's important to note that it's a seven five nine. Sorry. Um, yeah. So it keeps going down again. Just get, <laughs> keeps getting lower and lower. It's like the more people watch it, the more they realize or think about it. After oh, the so like saying yesterday for me? Yeah. Yeah. yeah fair enough. Got, um, got me. Got me there. Uh, people just can't read between the lines. It's okay. Yep. Same um, thing with Akudama. <laughs> Look, the guy you wrote this also wrote fucking. Dog and Rapa. Are we really? We gave it like an eight. <laughs> we gave Dog and Rapa an eight. Yeah, because it was bad. Has yeah. gave it a ten. <laughs> yeah, and it has come in and give it a ten as well. No, it has <laughs> hates it. Yeah. it, it well, has hates it, but he's also one hundred percented like all the game. It has has a weird relationship with Dog and Rapa. It's a love hate. Yeah, um, that's fair. All right, and also we gave it a seven four. <laughs> seven four. Yeah. Seven four eight. Same thing. <laughs> Round to the nearest eight. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> yeah. All right, Pete, what are you nominating? Glue's back on the menu, baby. And guess what? You guys all have to vote for it this time. Uma Musabe, pretty derby. Give me, okay. my, give me my legacy points, baby. Can I invoke my victory? Yes. You can so vote for people... your own show. Okay. So everybody but Miles can vote for it. Or has to vote for it, you're saying? Yeah, everybody has to vote for it except for Miles because he won the bracket challenge. All right, this is the... <laughs> For this this is Miles could vote for his own show first if he wants to. I I was gonna say I I have not. I am going to I, very I, very ethically wait until the day before, see if my vote sure. can go to something to beat it. And I would do the do same that. thing <laughs> <laughs> because I am God. Note that I never do that with my vote. I normally sure. vote the night of. He, does, he actually the, does vote the night for the of. audio listeners. Miles is blinking uncontrollably. <laughs> Yeah. I'm holding up 
proof that I do do that right now for the audio only. <laughs> Miles is also holding up a gun. Miles, put yeah. it down. I, it Miles, <laughs> Miles, why are you holding a gun at Discord? You can't I, shoot me. I'm holding it up to a special week figure right now, and if no. you vote for it, I'll shoot special week. No, God, no. Um, oh, I, I, God. I guess I should do it to silence Suzuka since she died after she broke a leg, and we all know what happens there. Yep. Um, so that's why you should watch Uma Musume, baby. <laughs> Have I been researching all of the horses and checking their pedigree so that I can calculate how inbred they all are with each other? Yes, I've been doing that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Love it. A lot of work for something that we don't want to vote for um, or ever watch. Have uh, you met me? <laughs> yes. yes I um, fair enough. Fair enough. Usually it's reserved for at least stuff we're somewhat interested in. Uh, or, or are curious about it. Very, I guess you're curious. About I'm it. interested in being a hater, Pat. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. You want to be a valid hater, and that's fair. All right, sweet. Yeah, I'm gonna re-up Vivi because it did really well, and I would love to go back to that. I think it show I still have not gotten around to finishing because uh, Funimation sucks uh, or Crunchyroll sucks. Whoever, one or the other. Basically. You could finish it right now. Yep. How? By watching it on Crunchyroll. No. <laughs> it, you you've done this before this has happened no, before no 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 i can't watch it no 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 <laughs> um, actually i can it's the dub though i swear to god it's just the dub I'm pretty sure. it might be i don't know it's but i think it's the dub good. which i was watching the dub's the on crunchyroll yes and the the sub is not on crunchyroll the yet, sub is also on crunchyroll it is now oh well then that must have happened very recently because again i went to check before my last flight to, so i could watch it and it is not there um you you said this with end of evangelion once no, it's still downloaded on my phone. I just, again, it's like hard to watch End of Eva on a flight, you know, with like strangers sitting next to you. I watched 3.0 plus 1.0 on a flight and I didn't want to get off because I had like five minutes left. So I just sat in oh. my chair and finished 3.0 plus 1.0. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, the time is the thing. Again, it's more just like okay. I know what happens in it. So it's like, ooh, that's tough. So uh, the yeah. sub has been on Crunchyroll since at least March 1st, 2022. That's a lie. That is a straight up lie because I've tried I, to download the sub. I feel like I sub. watched the sub on Crunchyroll when it came out, <laughs> like straight up. <laughs> but it, it wasn't on there. Well, again, I, I, it's like I've wanted to watch it for so long and it wasn't every time I went to go download it, it would only have the dub uh, as an availability. You know why? Because Crunchyroll didn't have the download option. And their app was trash. Well, no, because they had VRV still, uh, and it wasn't on VRV up until VRV then suddenly hit the hit the can with the merger. But then Crunchyroll still didn't have downloading until like six months ago, maybe not even. That's what it was. All right, now it's all making sense. <laughs> and the pieces are being put into place. Yes. I'm glad we took up, yeah, four rifles sitting there for 10 minutes waiting for these nominations. <laughs> no one's funny. listening anymore. I know. <laughs> I don't blame them. No one's listening. To the if, you, if, you're, if you're still listening to this, write pineapple fish in the comments. Ooh. Yes, sir. Or in our Discord's uh, general chat at some random. Why not banana fish? Which you should join the Discord. I was just saying random words. Banana fish is random words, but it's also an anime. I mean, that's a thing. Topical. Though. Like a banana fish is Topical. a thing. Who knows? If you have made this far and you want to support us, the best way to do so is to like, comment, <laughs> subscribe, leave a review on whatever platform you're watching or listening to us on. Next week, when this episode airs, I'm trying to think it out. I think I'm doing like a mid-season check-in on the season, that is. So look forward to that. Otherwise, if you are here for Watch Club, we will see you next time for Tower of God. That's what we're watching. Thanks, so we'll see you next time. Peace. Bye bye.